Hey everyone, Christy Glass here with my faithful companion, Louise. She's just gonna get settled right there. I have a finished object for you today that I love so much and this sort of ties in with this. Oh, actually this is, this is backwards. So let me take it off and fix it, but first show you. This is my little tiny Viking. So this Viking is about as big as a half dollar, maybe. It's just a tiny little Viking and it's on a set of this ball chain. I call it dog tag chain. I'm not sure what the official name for it is. I love the contrasting fastener right there. I get this ball chain at a store in New York City called Toho Shoji. I have not seen it anywhere else. When you walk in, and I haven't been for a while, but in the olden times, when you walk in, there's this wall of it and it's all different colors, all different sizes. And I find it so inspiring and I always want to make something with it. So I have taken to using this ball chain on my little mochi mochis. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you this book called Knitting Mochi Mochi. There's actually several Mochi Mochi Land books, all by Anna Prochevic. I'm not sure if I said her name right, but let me show you her name. She was on my channel and I will link to our interview underneath this video so you can see how lovely she is. She has also presented many art pieces at Vogue Knitting Lives. There was one at the Lion Brand Yarn Studio, I believe, before it closed and other places like that. She is such a lovely woman and actually she gifted me this gnome in a speedo when I was there interviewing her. And this gnome in a speedo even has a butt crack, which I never noticed until today. It's all about the details and a little belly button. This gnome in a speedo is also on a ball chain that you can wear or I can wear around my neck. She also gifted me a mini Christy glass, which let me show it to you. While I was promoting the Knit a Ball Pit project a few years ago for Vogue Knitting Live, she knit me this Christy glass as a thank you, and I love the lipstick. I think it's so good. And then my friend Angela, actually, with her patterns, made me this little unicorn. So all of this tiny knitting is so much fun. And I wanted to show you one other that I've made. This is a, I think it's a camelid. So it's either a llama or an alpaca. It kind of reads like a sheep, but it's supposed to have a longer neck there. And I made this. I remember I made this on a trip. I think I was heading to maybe TNNA and used this awesome indie dyed yarn to make an indie dyed llama fiber animal. Also on a chain. So I had a friend and I can't remember how we got on the subject, but I showed her this book somehow. And I said, you know, look through this, maybe you'll find something inspiring. And I really can't remember how the conversation started, but she is a teacher and she opened to the page with a pencil and said, make me this. Actually, you already saw a sneak peek of it on the back here. I took a look at my fingering weight yarn in my stash because this is done on tiny needles, fingering weight yarn. I think they suggest using maybe a 2.25 millimeter needle, which is I think a one. I only had a set of two millimeters. My 2.25 millimeters I've used on these before and I could only find three. It's better to have at least four, I think. So I had a set of five of these 2.0. You can see they're very thin. I could break these in half very easily. All five of them take up about a half an inch. So this is very tiny knitting. These are a little bit long for mochi mochis. I think maybe more of this size, like a four or five inches might have served me better, but it's fine. And these are a little bit bendy. I got these uh, a long time ago and I don't, I don't recall the brand. So these are my 2.0s millimeter double pointed needles. And then I gathered up my yarn. So I have this breaking yarn, this awesome hazmat suit color for the body of the pencil. I had some indie dyed gray. I think this came from a Toad Hollow mini set. So it's gray, but it has a little bit of special indie dyed in there, but I thought it would be fine. 
adds character if there's a little something in there. Then I had this pink and I don't recall where this came from, but it was another mini set. It really read pink eraser to me. Then I have this gorgeous, which I still have plenty left, which was the wood color on the pencil. This is this gorgeous Brazilian yarn that Paula Pereira got for me from Da Fazenda. And working with this just a little bit that I did for this pencil, it was really dreamy yarn. So very exciting to still have some in my stash. And then I had this cone of black yarn from a friend. I don't know what it is. It feels a little cottony, a little cashmere-y but I needed just a tiny bit. So these are my players in the pencil. And here's the finished object. It doesn't write, but you know, you can pretend. So let me tell you about some of the skills you'll need to make this pencil. First, you need to be able to knit in the round. You also need to be familiar with I chords. So it might be worth it to practice some I chord because there's an I chord technique at the beginning to give this very dense eraser top and also at the end to give this point and this, is it graphite or lead that's in the pencil? The rest of it is very straightforward. There's hardly any shaping to this pencil because pencils are straight in nature. So. Actually, I would say this is a very good one to start on if you are new to the mini mochi mochi toy making land. I do recommend the pencil for that reason. These guys get a little more complicated with different moving parts of the braids and the helmet and the beard and the arms and the legs. That's a little extra. I was a little distracted when I was working on this pattern. I was watching a show. So something that threw me a little bit is it said the fingering weight yarn in small amounts of pink, parentheses, color one, gray, parentheses, color two, yellow, parentheses, color three, tan, parentheses, color four, and black, parentheses, color five. I was reading it as, I skipped the pink because I was just looking for color one. So I went color one, oh, it's gray. And even though intellectually that shouldn't make sense because it starts at the top with the pink, I decided that maybe there was gonna be some sort of grafting or Kitchener stitch, which also doesn't make sense because I have knit enough of her patterns to know that that is usually not a technique that she uses. So I started this with the gray yarn and then by the fourth row, I was like, what am I doing? This is, it needs to be pink. So it was a good little practice round and then I got back on track and said, just look at the picture and make good choices, Christy Glass, <laughs> which I did. If you don't like your pencil personified, you can just knit your pencil like this and leave the eyes off. I think the other nice thing about it is if you do wear it as a chain, you can wear it one direction or the other. So maybe you're just in a pencil mood one day and then you're in a personified pencil mood the next day. This is a simple French knot to make these eyes and you need just a tiny bit of stuffing. You could also use something besides polyfill. Like if you don't have polyfill and you don't wanna buy an enormous bag, you could stuff it with just some of your ends. Like if you have many little snips from finishing off projects, just stuff it full of yarn if you want. That would actually make it easier to insert this chain. It gets a little dicey trying to squeeze it really tight and get that ball through the polyfill. It is possible I could have put the chain in before I finished knitting it, I think, but I wasn't thinking of that at the time. Another technique you wanna become familiar with is how to weave in ends in a, in a toy. And it's pretty straightforward, but this one's a little tricky because you don't have a ton of different areas to pull your needle through at random. You have plenty of yellow, but the other parts are a little smaller. So I ended up, especially with my black one, I just brought it all the way through the tip of the eraser so that it would get lost in the polyfill and then snipped it right there. So I'm sure there are some videos on YouTube about how to weave an ends on knitted toys and I suggest looking those up as well. So this is my tiny knitted pencil. I'm always gonna be a fan of Mochi Mochi. I find it to be a nice little break, a little miniature challenge when I'm in between projects and just need to chill out and finish something in one setting. And this little pencil was no exception. 
Thank you so much as always for joining me here on Christy Glass Knits and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.